Hi, welcome back. In today's class, in the intermediate class, we'll be working on a lot of inversions, the actions for those, opening of the chest, and a lot of deep breathing. So we'll use a few props. If you have blocks, get your blocks, uh, one chair, couple st or one strap, and a blanket. So whatever props you have, just get them around you, and we'll see how we can use them. All right, let's get started. Before we get started, if you enjoy this video and find it helpful, please give it a like. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe and don't forget to click the bell so that you are notified when the new videos are uploaded. Now let's get started. So sit in Sukhasana, easy cross-leg position. Adjust your hips. So spreading the buttocks, be right on the sitting bones, the left and the right sitting bone. And have your legs crossed. So in the Sukhasana position, the cross of the the leg is intersecting with the crust of the pelvis. Feet are underneath the knees. Release the knees, release the thighs. Take your hands back behind you. With the fingertips, press down and bring your weight so that you can feel the weight on the sitting bones. So you're, not, you're neither too far back or too far forward, but you're right in the center and the shoulders are moving back. So you're loading the, the trunk directly over the hips. Right, and then lifting up. Press the fingers down, drop your shoulders, descend the shoulder blades, and feel that front body lifting as well. So from the pubic bone, lift up into the navel, navel to the chest, and then holding that, bring your hands to the front of the chest, and close your eyes. Bring your attention to your breath, And observe anywhere in the body that you can feel any tension. Bring your breath there. See if you can release it. Soften it. Relax it downward. So the knees are descending, the thighs descending. And as you move the shoulders down, feel the weight of the arms moving down into the elbows. while you keep the lift through the side trunk. So you're lifting up through the armpit area, but descending the outer shoulders and arms down. As you observe your breath, let your breath be quiet, soft, slow, and smooth. taking a few moments to separate yourself from your, your day to this time for your practice. And then bowing your head. Bring your hands down to your knees and lift your head and open your eyes. Okay, we'll start first by coming off the, whatever you were sitting on, and I'll have you take two blocks. So I didn't mention that at the beginning of the class, so just get yourself two blocks. You're gonna take one block underneath the shoulders and you'll take one block for the head. All right, so this, your shoulder blades will be on this block, your head will be here. You'll come into it by just coming onto your hips and then position that block so that when you lift the chest, your shoulder blades will be flat, flat against that block, and then adjust your head on that other block so that the shoulders are opening, the chest is opening. And just bring your knees together just to begin with. So first concentrating on being even on the hips, lifting the chest, rolling the shoulders down, and feel the breath through the front chest. So starting to expand, letting your shoulders descend down with gravity, 
Just allowing the front chest to broaden and widen as you take a few deeper breaths there. So just getting used to this position, a little bit of a concave back position. You can feel the breath. And now you're going to extend your legs down. So you've already made sure you were on the hips evenly and your lower back is lengthened. So you don't want to have your hips drawing up, but keep that extension and then extend even further by drawing your legs away from you. Having the toes pointed straight up, you can have the feet separated, have the thighs descending. So against this descending action of the thighs, the chest is lifting. From here, if you can take the block down higher, then you can move the back of the head away from the shoulders. So you're lengthening the neck, but you're still getting that feeling of the shoulder blades moving down and forward toward the chest. So as the shoulder blades move toward the chest, the chest opens and broadens. So just being there. So adjust your block as according to your body condition. If it feels better to have the block a little bit higher, then take it higher. You could even use two blocks on a flatter um, surface like this block. You could put two blocks on top if, if having one high block is too much. And then just take a few breaths there. And now I'm gonna bend my knees and I'll roll to the side. I'm going to take the block the notch higher. So for some of you, you'll be able to do this. Some of you, maybe not. But you can have a second block here if you need to. Or you can have a blanket. So here, for those of you that can go a little bit deeper, here's a narrow block. I've changed the block. It's on the highest height, and it's on the narrow edge, and I have that right between the shoulder blades, right in the center of the spine. From here, I'm getting more of a lift of the chest. And then I bring my arms back, extend the arms, and bring the head right onto that block. And here, I'm gonna take my arms and extend. Okay, so it's quite a nice stretch. It's quite a, a lift of the chest, so you have your Alternative, which is taking the block a little bit lower on that flatter side. And now from here, you're going to extend the legs. So as you extend the legs, you're still pressing through the heels, drawing the toes back, and getting that arch in the back as the hips move down both left and right. Lift up through the lower back, lift up through the middle back, and then, of course, you're supported on the shoulder blades. So the shoulder blades are helping to lift the chest. Extend the arms out. Change the cross on the arms. Bring the arms back. If you had that block a little bit toward the back of your head, you can always take the arms. If you have that opening, and bring rest the arms on the block. Moving your attention to your thighs. The head of the femur bone, move the thighs down. You can feel that descending action. Get even more lift through the whole back body, length through the front body. If it's too much to have your legs straight, then you can bend your knees. Stay in that position with your feet on the floor. and then extend the arms back behind you. And now take your hands on the side of the block, walk your fingers down, so your elbows are facing in the opposite direction and lengthening. So the arms are parallel to one another. Elbows are not moving out to the side, but they're moving towards one another, so you feel that broadness come across the back. You feel that broadness between the shoulder blades. Now cross your legs. So at this point, you can bring your legs into any position that you feel is comfortable, either 
The knees are bent, feet are on the floor, legs are crossed, or straight legs, Dandasana. Now lift your chest away from the block. Change the cross on your legs if your legs are crossed. Stay with your breath. So lengthening the breath from the pubic bone to the navel, up through the front body. And then extend your arms out and bring the arms up. Bring the hands back onto the floor. Bring the feet onto the floor. And then you'll come up. I want you to come up by pressing the hands, pressing the arms, and lift the head and lift the chest. Come up. And then you'll take your block away. We'll just do a twist here in Sukhasana. So sitting cross-legged, bring your left arm up, exhale, turn, bring your hand onto your outer knee, walk the other hand back. So we're broadening through the back, where you had the blocks on the shoulder blades. Now, with that imprint, move the shoulder blades forward toward the chest, turn the chest toward the wall. Use your back hand to keep yourself lifted and perpendicular to the floor. And then release, come back to the center, change. So taking the hand on the outer knee, the other hand back behind you, pressing with the fingertips, lift up, exhale, turn. So using that breath to help you to turn from the abdomen, turn from the middle, turn from the upper chest. Feeling those shoulder blades now, shoulder blade moving in different directions but still moving, lift up through the chest. And exhale, change the cross on your legs. We'll do that one more time. So reaching up, take your hand back. This time take the palm and face the palm outward. Take the other hand back a little bit further. Inhale, lift, exhale, turn. Now lift the chest more. Where the shoulder blades were on the block, find that spot and move the shoulder blades forward. Turn and look over your back arm, your back shoulder. And release, coming back to the center, just making sure that you haven't shifted, so keep your hips grounded, feet grounded, knees descending, pressing, inhale, lift, Exhale, turn. Take your hand back a little bit further this time, widening through that collarbone, drawing that shoulder back. Stay with the breath. Exhale, turn. So the breath will help you to get into that turning action, into that pavrita action, twisting action. And then release. Okay, so now you're going to come into forward virasana. Knees wide, toes together. Just lengthen. Anchoring your hips back, extending your arms forward. So have both hands on the mat. In line with your shoulders. So just check and lengthen. Stretch the toes back, the front of the foot, the ankles, descend the shin bones, move the thighs down. So anchoring back with your, with your legs and your hips, extend forward with your arms. And then come up into Adho Mukha Svanasana. First come onto your toes. So with your hands pressing down, lift up. Lift your hips up. Lift the arms up into the back so that to connect the upper arm into the shoulder girdle. Shoulder blades lifting up. 
keep that lift, lift the knees, and then start to descend the heels. So don't think about the heels just dropping, but moving the heels back to move the fronts of the thighs back as if you were extending the heels all the way to the end of your mat, rolling over the mounds of the toes as you bring the heels toward the floor, closer to the floor, moving the back of the heel back, front of the thigh back. And just breathe open through the armpit area. Observe the breath in the abdomen. So not falling toward the floor, but moving in and up. And then walk forward, Uttanasana. Have your hands out to the side, feet hips width apart. Coming forward, release your head down. Let the whole side trunk sink down. Bring more weight onto the front of the foot. Moving the inner knees back, inner thighs back. Lift the backs of the thighs up toward the sitting bone. And release your side trunk. Lengthen out. And then bring the feet together. So hinging deeply from the hip socket, create that space. So deep, moving deeper into the hip, bring your hands out to the side. And as you bend your elbows, start to release your head down. Keep the legs active. So you're lifting up through the legs. You're moving the inner thigh back, front thigh back, with the fingertips pressing into the floor. Move your trunk towards your legs. Head toward the floor. Now come back to your breath. Exhale, release the abdomen back. And then come up. Fingertips on the floor, concave the back. Urdhva Hastasana. Extend the arms up, reaching up, and come to Tadasana. So we've come to the front of your mat. We'll just do a few jumpings. So standing in Tadasana. Come back to your breath. Come back to that stability, that quietness, that balance and evenness through the front body, the back body, outer sides, inner sides, Inhale, raise your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Bend your knees, walk or jump back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Taking a few breaths there. Bend the knees, walk or jump forward, Uttanasana. Urdhva Hastasana. Namaste. Tadasana. Urdhva Hastasana. You're coming into Utkatasana. So remembering that movement of the shoulder blades on the blocks. Bring the chest forward. Exhale, Uttanasana. Walk or jump back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Walk or jump forward, Uttanasana. Come up through Utkatasana. Keep extending through the fingers, dropping the shoulders, shoulder blades, moving down and forward. Inhale, come up. Namaste, Tadasana. 
Inhale. Exhale. Uttanasana. Walk or jump back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Stay there for a few breaths. And then coming forward into plank. And then getting that scooping action right there where your shoulder blades were. Bring the shoulder blades forward. Upward facing dog. You can walk the toes in. Keep the legs straight. Extend back through the heels. As if you were pressing away from those blocks, lift the chest. Exhale. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Jump forward, Uttanasana. Urdhva Hastasana. Tadasana. Urdhva Hastasana. Uttanasana. Jump back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Walk your feet forward. Be on the fronts of the feet. Pressing the feet, the toes. Lift the thighs away from the floor. Lift the chest. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Uttanasana. Utkatasana. Urdhvahastasana. Namaste. Tadasana. Inhale, Urdhvahastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Jump back, Chaturanga. Upward dog. Downward dog. Jumping forward. Uttanasana. Take a few breaths there. Urdhva Hastasana. Namaste. Tadasana. So standing in Tadasana, recover your breath, recover your balance, your stability, recover that quietness. All right, next we'll practice Adho Mukha's Vrikshasana, which is handstand. So I'm gonna have you, just for the first, to get a strap and bring the strap onto your arms. So this will give your arms, if mentally you think your arms aren't strong enough, this will give you a little bit more stability or if you, if you hyperextend in the elbows, this will also give you some direction. So your hands are in line with the shoulders so you have that strap. All right, so first we're gonna start out by just doing Ardha Adha Mukha Svrikshasana, which is half. So you'll sit down on your mat at the wall and just measure your distance. So my hips are all the way up to the wall. I can see where my heels are. I'm gonna bring my hands there, okay? So once I've positioned my hands, pressing out into that strap, fingers, index finger facing forward, and then come up. So you're in a, a dog position now, a short dog position. And you'll come up and bring the feet up. So walking the foot up where the toes are pointing down toward the floor and then bring the other leg up. So as you press up, you're creating a little bit of lightness here because your legs are up so high. So bring your shoulder blades in, same as when they were on the block. Just breathe. And then if you can take your legs down a little bit further, and you can take the feet down. Keep bringing your shoulder blades toward the wall so your back's not rounding. Keep the thighs lifted. Shoulders lifting away from the floor. 
and then come down. Come into Uttanasana. Hands just by the side. Release your neck, release your shoulder. So you're releasing your shoulders, but you're not moving your shoulders down toward the floor. You're releasing them up away from the back of the neck. Okay. Okay, we're going to do it again. So bring your hands down. Spread the hands. So you're balancing on the hand. So you want to be on the inner edge, the outer edge of the wrist, spreading through the whole hand and into the fingers. Okay. Now, again, coming up, toes looking down toward the floor. Press into the hands. Get used to bringing that weight onto your arms. Reach up. And with your legs extended up, lift up so that the Lightness comes in the shoulder girdle. The shoulder blades are moving up. Armpit is facing the wall. And as you feel more comfortable bringing the legs down, keep the back moving toward the wall, toward the armpit area opening. Keep the thighs lifting up toward the ceiling. Press out into the strap, lift your thighs, and then come down and rest. Hold on to your elbows, and with the hold of the elbows, just draw your whole upper back down. Take a few breaths there, and then come up. Okay, we're going to turn around now and have the chair facing the wall, and we'll take our hands to the wall. So we'll do another Adhamukha Svrikshasana. You can either use the strap or not use the strap. So you're going to come down, and your hands now are going to be at the wall, and you can turn the arms out. So you want to get that rotation of the inner arms so that the hands are turning out. You can b use the thumbs at the wall. All right, and now I'm going to bring my feet onto the chair. So I have my knees on the chair, hands on the floor. And then as I press down, I'm going to walk my feet forward. So now the back of the head is moving toward the floor. The crown of the head was facing the floor. And with my feet, I'm pressing into the chair, connecting from the heels to the hips. So I'm bringing the hips all the way to the wall. Pressing down through the arms, lift up through the wrists, forearms, upper arms. Let the head hang. Feel the back against the wall. So you can see the shoulder blades are not moving into the wall, but they're moving away from the wall. And then come down in a kind of prasarita padatanasana, you can take your feet wider and release your head down again. Keep the legs straight. And then come up. Okay, we're going to do that one more time. I'm going to take the mat on the chair just for a little bit extra grip on this chair. It's a little bit could be slippery, so just for safety's sake, it's maybe have that mat there, okay? So this time, we're gonna do the same thing with the arms. If you wanna use the strap, you can, you've done it once with the strap, once without the strap, so you can see the benefit. If you wanna use the strap, take the strap again. This time, we'll have our hands facing forward, okay? And we'll be bringing both legs onto the chair and then keeping one foot on the chair and lifting the other leg. Okay, ekapada. So coming into it, knees on the chair, toes on the chair. Now just get the weight on your hands so that you can feel that you're really strong foundation, strongly grounded, and then start to come up. Walk the feet in. Release the head on that strap. 
It's a little inconvenient, but it's okay. Press the toes down, and now lift one leg up. See if you can bring it all the way to the wall. Reaching up. And then bring that leg down. Reground through the toes, press into the toes, and then lift the leg up. Keep the leg straight. Bring the heel to the wall and lift the other thigh up. And then come down. Take your legs out to the side. Take your strap off. Cross Rita Padatanasana. Straighten the legs. Come back to the breath. And then come up. Okay, you're going to take your chair away. And now we're going to go into Adho Mukha Svrikshasana. You can use your strap again and have it right on your elbows, palms in front of you. If you have it too slack, too much slack in it, when you go up, you won't be able to use it to press into. So just for an example, that's going to be too wide when I go up. So your arms are connecting into your shoulder, into your shoulder girdle, so you, you need to have that connection. So the, don't take the strap too wide. Now, it's a little uh, annoying for the head, so you can just slide it up, right? Maybe have the tail just to the side, but don't have the buckle on you. So we'll do it once with the strap, and then if you don't feel that you need that strap, your arms are good, your mind is good about that, then you can take the strap away. So we'll just practice once with the strap, and you'll come down, <coughs> come into downward dog, and then you'll walk forward. And just remember how the back was, and those blocks were pressing the shoulder blades away, pressing toward the chest. Still, the back is going to be away from the wall. Press up. So you can take one leg and lift. Use that one leg and then stretch up. So you can try a few times. And then when you're there, look back between your hands. So lengthen the back of the head. Get that memory of the block. Where the block was, lift your chest away from that block. Bring your feet together. Stretch your legs up. Connect the inner heel, outer heel, buttocks forward, and thighs down. Remember how we were on the block in Dandasada. So the legs, thighs are moving away from you. One leg down and then the other. Come into Adhamukha Svanasana, downward dog. and then come into Uttanasana. We'll do it again. So this time, if you don't want to use the strap, try without the strap. And again, just showing how to come up. One leg is straight, one knee is bent. You're hopping, you're hopping until finally you bring the other leg up with it. Lift the chest, lengthen the back of the head, extend the legs up, inch the heels up the wall, create that lightness in the shoulders, breathe, and come down, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take a few breaths there. Walking in, Uttanasana.
We'll do one more. This time you turn your hands out. So you have your hands a little bit wider. If you're having the strap, take that strap wider. So here, when the hands are turned out, you're getting that external rotation on the upper arm. Coming forward, just moving away from the wall, even though you're moving toward the wall, and then bring one leg up and the other. Connect your heels, your toes. Press into the heel of the hand, into the wrists evenly, lift up. Curve the upper back where the blocks were. Keep the legs extended and moving toward the wall. Now press up through the ball of the foot, lift up more. Keep that firmness through the legs. And then come down. Turn your hands, Anamukha Svanasana. And Uttanasana. Take your feet together. Take your fingers back. Just be there and breathe. And then coming up. Okay, we'll have a strap again. This time we'll have a block. The next um, posture we'll practice, uh, Pinchamayarasana. Okay, so you're gonna take the block to the wall. And we're using the block to keep the hands shoulder width apart. So when you're beginning this, it's important to have the right distance for your shoulders so the chest will be able to lift. So you can take this strap right onto your elbows and when you bring your hands onto the block, I want you to bring your thumbs to the center of the block and extend your fingers out to the side. Extend the fingers, be right in the center. And then coming down, be balanced. So you're, the tendency for the arm is to roll out. So you're pressing down from the inner wrist, you're pressing down using the thumb, and you're pressing down to the inner arm, okay? So not rolling out. That We could practice that way, but we're not right now. We're practicing bringing the inner arm down, inner wrist down, okay? And then from here, you're going to lift up and lift your head up away from that block. So you're already getting that curve of the upper back that we had when we used the block on the floor. So just work here to bring that chest forward First, you can release the head. And then when you bring the head up, you're lengthening from the back of the head away from the shoulders. So you're not just throwing the head up. Okay, coming forward like we did in Anamukha's Vrikshasana, you'll kick one leg up. Find the wall. Once you find the wall with the heels, bring the heels together. Now press the wrist down. Come back to your foundation. Press and slide the heels up, curving the upper back, look back at the block. So the head is not on the block, the head is not on the floor, the head is lifting, pressing the arms, lifting up through the shoulders. And then bring one leg down and the other, come into forward Virasana. Come back to your breath. And then we'll do it again. Okay, so you could probably feel the wrist was wanting to lift. Press the wrist down, move the forearm down, keep the hands descending and wide, and then come up again, come forward. So the back, this part here, is moving away from the wall. So if you find your back moving toward the wall and the head going down, you're in the wrong position, okay? So keep the head lifted, and by lifting the head, you can already feel that action in the shoulder blades, in the upper back. 
So taking one foot back, one foot is helping you to press up, lift up. Connect the heels, connect the toes, reach the legs up, breathe. And then bring one leg down and the other. I'm not going to show bringing the legs away from the wall, but if you can do that, you can do that while you're up. Go back into Adho Svanasana. You have your block there. So take your block, rest your head on the block. So your forehead. Come back to that quiet breath. And then forward Virasana. Rest your head on the block. Let your arms lengthen. So bring the block into that space right between the eyebrows and have the skin moving towards your nose, so not lifting up towards your head. If that's too high, you can lower the block. Extend the arms, release the hips back. And now just bend the elbows. Let the arms rest back, so the shoulders, upper arms, forearms, and the hand. Find a quiet breath there. Follow that breath. If the block was too high, you can take the block away. Just have a few more breaths in this position. Bringing the legs closer, feet close together. Let your abdomen and front ribs rest on your thighs. All right, and then come back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Take a few breaths, lengthen. I mean, it's finding that quiet breath. And we're gonna step into Uttita Trikonasana. So bringing the left leg forward. If you have a block, you can use the block, either the hand on the floor or the hand on the leg. Have the right distance. Come into Uttita Trikonasana. Remember the shoulder blades. Move the shoulder blades in. Front thigh back. From the front foot, lengthen up into the front thigh, into the hip, and bring the arm up. Coming into Ardha Chandrasana. Coming forward. Step the back foot forward. Place the front hand. If you need a block, you can take your block and then lift up. So use that back leg the way you did when you lifted up toward the ceiling. Lift up. Shoulder blades into the body. Reach the arm up, turn the chest. Just look out. Soft breath. And then come back into Uttita Trikonasana. Just looking straight out. Keep a quiet breath.
And then coming back. Anamukhasvanasana. Now lunge your other leg forward. Uttita Trikonasana on the other side. Take your arm up. Make sure you have the distance from the back leg. Use that block if you need it. Turn the chest where the shoulder blades were touching the block. Move the chest away from that block. Just look forward, quiet eyes, quiet breath. And then coming into Ardha Chandrasta. Coming forward, balancing. Lift the back leg. Like you were lifting it up in Adhamukha's Frikshasana. You have your stability. Bring your arm up. Just look forward for now. Quiet breath. Making those adjustments that you need to quietly. And then coming down, you teach a trikonasa. Adhamukhasvanasana. Uttanasana. Feet together. Take your hands to either side of the feet wide. And then start bringing the hands back. Release the head down. Shift your weight so you feel more weight on the front of the foot. And then press into the heels. Quiet breath. And then inhale, come up. Tadasana. All right, so standing at Tadasana, we're going to go from Virabhadrasana 1 to Pavrita Ardhachandrasana. All right, so you jump your feet apart. Just take your hands on your hips to begin with and turn your right foot, turn your left. Keep that heel pressing and connected to this back hip. Bend the front knee, and as you bend the front knee, you're going to bring the tailbone forward. So if you find you don't have enough distance, you can take more distance from that back leg. So extending through the heel, moving the tailbone in, lift the chest. Do a couple times until you come down, lengthening the front of the thigh, lifting the pubic bone up, lifting up through the chest. Now come back to where the shoulder blades were on that block. So even out, you can feel you're turning the trunk to one side. So as if you were on those blocks, evenly adjust your chest, bring your arms out to the side, and then bring the arms up. So shoulders moving down, shoulder blades moving forward, chest facing up toward the ceiling. Lengthen the back of the head, looking up. And then coming up, we're going forward over that leg. Bring the hand onto the floor. Other hand on your hip. If you need a block here, you can use the block. So when you come up, you're lifting that back leg Toes are pointing down toward the floor. And there's not a whole lot of space between the two legs. So this pelvis is turning down slightly so that you can start to get that rotation. You're lengthening through the lower back, turning the chest, turning toward that back wall. Keep the back leg lifted and then bring the arm up. Coming down. 
Coming back to Virabhadrasana one, bending the knee, bringing the arms up, inhale, come up, and turn. Okay, so doing the other side now, just make sure that you are not going off your mat. So coming back to the back end of the mat a little bit, turning the leg, rotating. So coming into first set, Virabhadrasta one stride with the heel pressing back, turning that thigh, inner thigh lifting, rolling out, and then a couple times just to see that you have the right distance. Bending the knee, tailbone moving forward. And now observe your chest. This chest wants to move back, so rotate from the back body, chest moving forward. Imagining the imprint of those blocks. And reach the arms up. Press into the front foot. Lift your abdomen away from that thigh. Lifting up, lift the chest. Breathe. And then coming into Pavrita Ardha Chandrasana. So lengthen forward first. Bring your hand to the block. Step forward. Walk the block forward. So when you shift your weight, your hand will be underneath your shoulder. Lift the back leg. Keep extending through the back heel. First bring the hip bones parallel to one another. And then you're going to turn this hip down just a little bit. So as you do that, you're able to start to turn the chest, turn the trunk. Keep that back leg lifted. If it's difficult to bring your arm up at this point, keep your hand on your hip. Lift, turn. And then come down. Come back into Virabhadrasana 1. Inhale, straighten the legs, turn the feet, and jump your feet together. Breathe. Stand at Tadasana. Find your breath. Quiet breath. Observe what you feel in your body. Be aware of the energy moving throughout. So as you stand in Tadasana, bring some quietness, some softness. All right, next we'll prepare to go into Supta Virasana. So we'll do that using a bolster. So take your bolster, and you'll be using a bolster and a blanket. Um, you'll be using more height if you need it. So we won't go all the way down into Supta Virasana. We'll just come into a supported Virasana or Supta Virasana. So you'll come down onto the knees and then sit between the ankles. If that's difficult, then you can sit on a block. And if you need to sit on a block, then you would need to have more height behind you, as in two bolsters. I'll show you this way first. So you're lifting up. You're lengthening the lower back. The buttocks is moving away. And then you can even lift the knees here. We'll give a nice stretch to the front of the ankle and bring the spine onto that bolster from the lower spine to the middle spine to the upper spine. Okay, and then lengthen the fronts of the thighs. So here I have my ankles on the floor, the feet on the floor, the hips on the floor. Hips are moving down, so there's a rotation of the pelvis and the shoulder blades are here supported. You can bring your arms out to the side. So you're lengthening the fronts of the thighs. You're extending from the backs of the um, lower buttocks 
towards your knees. Okay, so the back legs are moving in this direction. Front legs are extending. So staying there. For those of you that find that difficult and you needed more height, you can take more height by either having a second bolster or a couple of blankets. And the way you would do that is to ha cross the bolster. And you could sit on the block. So there's many configurations of this, depending on what's happening. If you have tight ankles, you can bring a blanket, rolled blanket under the ankles. Here, this is when you can't sit on the floor. So here, I'm going to lift the knees up. And then, because this is at an angle, I could have moved this a little bit further down as well. And extend, extend the legs down. So I think it's a little bit too low. So that might be better. So you have to adjust according to your body and what you feel. So here now, if you weren't sitting on the floor, you're on a block, but then you have to build this up as well. You might want to take a blanket under here. If you feel your back is overarching, you can bring a blanket there. So there's many different versions of this. And then once you're settled, bring your arms back, holding on to the elbows, lengthen the thighs. Stay there. Just be aware of your breath. So we've done a lot of work with the legs and lifting. So now we're just Releasing the legs a little bit, releasing the back rib cage, releasing the shoulders and the shoulder blades. So I'm coming back down onto the one bolster. If you don't need a bolster at all, you can come down onto the floor, or you can even have a block behind you. So depending on the props you have, Whatever's going to support you, you can come back to that block across the shoulder blades. And then if you have a bolster or another block, you can support your head on that. So there's many different versions, but here you're getting that extension through the quadriceps, that length through the quadricep. Shoulder blades are, again, supported. And the buttocks is moving away, it's moving downward. Stay there for a few more breaths. So the thighs are moving towards one another, but at the same time, you're lifting up through the pelvis. So you're not sinking toward the floor, but there's a left lift through the pelvic floor. Now to come up, you're going to bring your hands near your feet. And you'll come up by lifting the chest first. So you use your arms, lift from the chest, head comes up last. Then taking that block away. Now adjust your hips till you're sitting evenly on your hips. And then cross your ankles. And you're going to come back onto the hips and sit in Dandasana with straight legs. So because the knees have been compressed for a little bit, you want to come out and just give the knees the opportunity to draw back into the knee socket. Take your hands behind you. And where you were on the block, move the shoulder blades forward. Lift up through the chest. Bring your arms back behind you. Fingertips on the floor, pressing, almost pulling back with the fingers without moving the fingers. Move the backs of the arms forward, move the shoulder blades forward, and lift the chest. Keep the legs connected, feet, heels, descend the thighs. 
And as the feet feel, as the knees feel that they're getting back to having some circulation and feeling, draw the kneecap into the knee socket and lift up. And then release. Okay, so just giving time for your knees to settle back. It's really important. Um, the knees, we are always sitting, and so they're always bent. So we've taken them in an opposite position, and so there's quite a bit of circulation that happens when you bring the legs back. So you want to make sure the knees get settled back into the socket. We don't have many muscles around the knees, so we've been building up that strength and just keeping awareness that the kneecaps are lifting so that you're activating the quadricep muscles and all the little muscles around, okay? All right, so now we're going to go into Shirshasana and we're going to use blocks for this. So I've built up a little bit of um, stand here just to bring that same awareness to the shoulder blades that we've been working with throughout the class. So there's two blocks on the bottom and they're slanted I'll take this off, show you. I've slanted them. They're a little bit away from the wall. And then I've got this block on top. And then this block is going this way. So depending on your height, if you're really tall, maybe your shoulder blades are going to be needing that higher height. For me, it's OK like this. All right, the hands are going to go inside here. So we're interlacing the fingers with the palms um, away from one another, and the wrists on the floor. So that same lengthening of the wrists that we got in Pinchamayarasana, so we're lengthening the outer wrist and bringing the head into that back of the, into the hands, okay? So just practicing this way so we still are aware of the shoulder blades, bring the hands in, and then come right onto the crown of the head. Lift the wrist, lengthen the wrist, and then come up into Adho Svanasana, a version of it. Press the wrist down, press the arms down, and feel where the shoulder blades are. So that part of the back is moving in. So it's, again, one more memory here, imprint for you to move the back away from the wall. Okay, so here, because the, the block is there, I have to really use a little bit more force to kick up. So I lift up, and then once my heels are there, I can feel the shoulder blades, and now I'm kind of bowed. So if I keep my legs at the wall, I'm doing more of a back bend. So I'm going to use the shoulder blades against the block as a way to stabilize. Okay, so feeling the evenness of both shoulders against the block, I stabilize and balance. If you need to keep your feet at the wall, keep your feet at the wall. So just be on the crown of the head, more toward the back of the head, so your ears are parallel to the floor. Keep your inner wrist down, forearm, elbows, Just come back to your breath, quiet breath. As you move your shoulders down, lift your shoulders. Your, as you move your elbows down, lift your shoulders up. And then what we practice in Virabhadrasana 1, move the tailbone in, the thighs back. Stay aware of the shoulder blades.
All right, we'll come down. So bring both feet to the wall. Do a little bit of a back arch there. Tailbone in. Still feeling the shoulder blades. And then bring that evenness back to the shoulders at the block. Keep one leg lifted. And bring the other leg down. Come back into forward Virasana. Extend the arms. And then come up. All right, so if you don't have blocks, then you could just practice that without the blocks. But the idea here is your shoulder blades are not moving toward the wall, but the shoulder blades are moving in. Okay? So building up that strength in your back, building up the strength through the legs, lift the legs up. All right, so now we're going to go into shoulder stand with the chair, okay? So you're going to take your chair, and have your mat on the chair. And you can either take um, blankets or a bolster, whichever you have there. So we're going to have this more of a resting pose. You can also take a bolster to the back of the chair to rest your legs on. So I'm not going to use that, but you can use that if you'd like. And if you want, depending on what kind of chair you have, you can also have a blanket at the back of the chair. All right, so I'm going to bring my legs up and over. So my hips are in the front of the chair. I'm moving them in. I'm hooking the legs, and then I'm going to come down. I can first feel the elbows, and then I loosen a little bit, start to slide a little bit to my shoulders or on that bolster. And then I can adjust the bolster. It's under my neck and it's on my shoulders. From here, I'm gonna take the hands onto the legs. And then I'm gonna come down a little bit further, but holding that chair leg so I don't lose it to keep the rotation of the shoulders. So this will teach you the rotation of the shoulders, keeping that lift again you can imagine the blocks behind the chest where we first started out. So keeping the chest lifted. And then here, you're going to extend the legs, coming straight up. So I have the hips on the chair. The legs are directly up. The thighs are moving toward the wall. So the legs are active. They're not Relax, the kneecaps are lifted, thighs are moving back. The hips are moving toward the wall. And that side trunk is lengthening with that rotation of the shoulders and that lift of the chest. So just be there. Come to a quiet breath. While we work with strength and building that strength, we also work with uh, quietness. So it doesn't need to be a strong, vigorous, aggressive breath, but managing to find that quietness within. While you're doing inversions, while you're doing backbending, whatever you might be doing, so that you're practicing and moving inward more and more as you practice into that quietness within, a quiet state. Finding that steadiness, that stability. So yoga is finding a stable seat 
And in that stable seat, we can find a quiet mind. Chitta Rita Narodaha, so quiet, stilling the fluctuations of the mind. At any point, you can bring your legs back to that chair bar. Rest the legs on the chair bar. You can keep the legs straight up, or you can take the feet into Baddha Konasana. So depending on your body condition and how long you can hold that, take the right adjustment for yourself. I'm gonna bring my legs back up and then I'm taking my hands out of the chair and holding on to the outer rails of the chair. Now for some of you, you'll be able to do this. Others, maybe not. So just stay in that other position where the feet are in Baddha Konasana or the legs are resting back on the chair for a few more breaths. Here, I'm going to take the legs over, pressing the arms down Pressing the hands down on that chair, I'm going to come into Halasana. So depending on your body condition, how long you've been practicing, you can come into Halasana. You can also have put something underneath here, underneath the feet prior, so that when you come back, you are in, your legs are lifted if the feet can't quite come to the floor. So. If you practice this one again, then you can know that ahead of time and maybe bring a bolster there or a chair there. And release your arms out to the side. Pressing into the toes, keep the thighs lifted. You can walk your feet away a little bit. Extend through the heels. Soft breath, quiet breath. And now, coming out, preparing to come out, you're gonna take your hands back on the chair and then bring your hips back to the chair Bring your feet onto the chair. So if you've had your legs up, just take your feet onto the chair and then you'll start to slide out. So when we went into it, we tucked the shoulders under. Now you're gonna lift the shoulders up, hold onto the chair so that you come out gradually. And as you do, if you've come out with enough control, you can end up with your hips on that bolster and then just take the legs up on the chair. Bring your arms out to the side. Staying there for a few breaths. We'll take Shavasana with the legs on the chair. So you can either stay in this position with the bolster under your hips, or you can lift your hips up and take that bolster out. And here, you just bring the bolster on the abdomen, thighs, so to the legs on the chair so that you want to come in with the hips so that the calves are on the chair and the thighs are descending. If your legs are lifted up, you have very long femur bones, which I don't, this bolster is too big, then you can bring the bolster there. So if you have long femurs, you can bring this onto the chair. Otherwise, you'll just bring your legs onto the chair. If you're about average height, which I am, depending on your chair, the height of your chair, and then just bring your arms out to the side. So again, you're bringing the shoulder blades down so they're flat against the floor. And with that, you can rotate the arm 
the shoulder. So you're bringing your arms about 60 degrees away from you. The palm facing up. So if the shoulders, if the hands are turned down, then the shoulders are lifted. So getting, uncatching the back of the shoulder on both sides so that the shoulder blade is in the position to just be flat on the floor. And then just allow yourself to be there. So we're going to take Shavasana here with the, the legs on the chair to release the legs down so that that feeling of quietness in the breath comes as you move the abdomen down towards your lower back. And then just allow all the ribs to widen. So from the center outward and with your exhalation, just allow all of the little muscles between the ribs to soften and broaden. Just letting yourself go, travel with your breath, and just allow yourself to be here. So just give yourself that extra gift to be here, to observe quietness within your body and your mind. Namaste. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you learned something. If you would like to look at more classes that touch on some of these things, like the inversion, the headstand, uh, the back bending, just take a look here and enjoy your practice. And I'll see you next time. Namaste.